Good evening, I'm Ryan Bonazzo. Thank you for joining us. Big news here in Ontario. After weeks of pressure, the province is finally bringing in a vaccine passport. Although Premier Doug Ford clearly not happy about it, his government has been reluctant to follow what Quebec and BC have done. The Premier previously saying he didn't feel the need to bring in a passport and that he didn't want to create two classes of citizens, vaccinated and unvaccinated. But beginning September 22nd, people in this province will have to show proof of vaccination along with a photo ID at a number of businesses. Then within a month of that, October 22nd, fully vaccinated will have access to a QR code they can show as proof. Ford blamed the lack of a federal initiative for his government changing course. It's no secret. This is something that he did not want to do. This is a serious step that we're not taking lightly. And I know this is going to be very difficult for some people. And let me be clear, this is a temporary tool that we won't use for a day longer than we have to. Some of the settings where the, the certificate will be used include restaurants, bars and nightclubs, as well as gyms, sporting events and concerts. However, not on the list are places like hair salons and retail stores. Ontario's Chief Medical Officer of Health, Dr. Kieran Moore, says those kinds of places have not been sources of transmission. The Thunder Bay Chamber of Commerce supports the proof of vaccination system for higher risk settings, but the Chamber President says the Ford government's rollout leaves much to be desired. Charla Robinson says she's disappointed local businesses will need to administer the system starting on September 22nd with paper receipts. She hopes the government will expedite the development of a more secure system using a smartphone app or QR code. This hasn't been a secret that various jurisdictions were moving in this direction and that this was probably going to be something that was going to be necessary at some point. So it's disappointing that the government is, is not ready. Employers covered by the new rules will also need more clarity on vaccine policies for their workers, Robinson says. She also notes some local businesses are concerned the vaccine requirement will keep customers away, but others, however, believe it may boost customer confidence to visit indoor settings such as restaurants. Active COVID-19 cases in this district are back up into double digits. The Thunder Bay District Health Unit is reporting two new infections today. Both are in the Thunder Bay area and are related to travel outside of northwestern Ontario. There are now 10 active cases across the district. Meanwhile, the Northwestern Health Unit is also reporting two new cases today. They come from the Rainy River District. There are now five active cases in the NWHU catchment area. As part of our ongoing federal election coverage, we're taking a closer look at candidates in Thunder Bay Superior North. Green candidate Bruce Heyer won nearly 8.5 percent of the vote in the 2019 election, and now Amanda Modajong is hoping to build on that in 2021. Ian Kaufman brings us this candidate profile. Canadians are tired of political bickering between the major parties and are ready for a change, says Green Party candidate Amanda Modajong. She promises her party would bring a more cooperative approach, keeping the focus on major issues like climate change, justice for Indigenous communities and the COVID-19 pandemic. I know from talking to people, climate change is still forefront on all of their agendas. They do definitely want to see a better response to the COVID uh, pandemic, 100%. And with that, they want a more concerted effort with the, between the federal and the provincial levels. The military veteran ran provincially in the riding in 2018 and federally in Thunder Bay Rainy River in 2019, finishing fourth each time. This year, she has minimized her in-person campaigning during an election she says shouldn't have been called during a pandemic. That election call is an example of the toxic culture of partisan politics in Ottawa, she says, one the Green Party would work to transform. It shouldn't be about the colour of the shirt that you wear. It should be about your actual ideals, how you manage to get things done, and what your focus is on Canadian people, right? When you stop focusing on Canadian people and start focusing on politicians having little squabbles here and there, you've lost the plot. Many recent polls have put the party's support in the low single digits nationally, 
but even with a handful of seats. Matajong says the Greens have forced other parties to take key issues like climate change, medical marijuana, and electoral reform more seriously. I would say that we win it pretty much every time because all of the issues that we put forward that are really important, they're always the issues that are most important to Canadians. And those are the things that we actually end up, even with three seats, getting a lot of government action with. Ian Kaufman, TBT News. Let's turn our attention to the Kenora riding now. David Bruno is hoping to reclaim the seat for the Liberals who lost the riding to the Conservatives in 2019. Mitchell Ringos has more with the Liberal hopeful. We are the party that's been able to weather this hurricane of uh, a pandemic. Uh, there's much more work to come. That is only one of the messages Liberal candidate David Bruno has for the voters as he canvasses neighborhoods in the Kenora riding. A riding that until two years ago was held by the Liberals. And while some have expressed concerns over the decision by Justin Trudeau to call a snap election, Bruno says the Liberals have a track record of getting things done and believes it's what's needed to help steer Canada through the pandemic. We need this mandate right now to clear the way to, to save ourselves from a possible fourth wave. And I believe that with our policies, we're going to weather our way through it. You know, for the last two years, what we've realized is that it's, it's very hard to govern on a minority government, especially when you have the opposition parties with a, a knife to your throat, constantly wanting something for their base in exchange for what you're trying to do for the population. And while Bruno may be a newcomer to the riding, he is no spring chicken in the political world, as he previously ran for the Northern Ontario Party in Thunder Bay, Atacokan, and challenged the Liberal nomination in Thunder Bay, Rainy River, but was ultimately unsuccessful against Marcus Pulowski. He has also helped craft legislation for the Liberals, using his expertise in cybersecurity to help compose Bill C-11, also known as the Digital Charter Implementation Act. When it comes to the issues, Bruno notes the twinning of the Trans-Canada Highway and broadband internet access are a big concern, along with others that hit home for him. We've got to take care of our seniors. I have an elderly mother as well that I, 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 I look after, um, my family as well. And these are the issues that most people have to deal with. Apart from that, climate change is ever, ever present. I mean, again, I don't have to reiterate that our forests are on fire and we have to make radical change. Mitchell Ringo's Northwest Newsweek. Students at Dennis Franklin Cromartie have been waiting for this day since March of 2020, when they could finally return to the classroom. The daily struggles of online learning were even more difficult for DFC due to remote internet access, but now things are, are starting to return to the way they were. Corey Nordstrom has more. It may not be normalcy yet at Dennis Franklin Cromartie High School, but a return to in-person schooling is long awaited as students can finally see teachers and friends after over a year and a half away from an environment they've come to miss. It would mostly be the sports and seeing people because I met so many good friends. I met my partner here too. And it's just like a, when you come in here, it's a, like a family you get the vibe of it's a big family. Last year, students had to stay in their home communities and receive their education over a computer, with spotty networks making an already difficult year even harder. Compared to the first year I was here in person, it was very challenging because there was a lot of technical issues and, oh, it's just so nerve-wracking. There's a lot of cutouts in lessons on online learning. So that makes it kind of hard to understand what the teacher is saying, what the assignment is. During COVID, online schooling was tough for mostly everybody. I know a bunch of people that dropped out. I was close to dropping out, but I still finished. It's hard to check in on someone um, virtually, just to make sure that they're doing well. It wasn't so much focus on the academics. It was making sure that they were, that their well-being, that they were okay. That was our concern. The school held an assembly with local leadership to welcome students back and give them some advice on the year to come. You know, if things get hard, just reach out to someone and finish that school year. But start with today. 
DFC currently has 80 students enrolled in the high school, though that number will hopefully soon increase to as much as 130. They need boarding homes. So um, boarding parents that normally might have taken four or five students in, now are just taking maybe one or two. So we have students that are still arriving the next few days, and uh, depending on when op spaces open up for them. To keep students safe from the virus while at school, DFC has imposed staggered classes so hallways are less crowded, more cleaning staff have been hired, and signing in will now be common practice. Corey Nordstrom, TVT News. The Lakehead Transportation Museum Society held its grand opening today for the newly restored Brill buses at the Pool 6 dock, and the group wasted no time in announcing its next project. Now that the two buses dating back to the 1940s are open to the public, the Society is switching gears to its next project, focusing on the James Whalen tugboat. It's currently docked at Cam River Heritage Park, but Society President Charlie Brown says they hope to make it the next addition to their growing historical collection on the waterfront. To do is be able to bring the James Whalen uh, from its location on the Cam River and bring it over to our site, incorporate it into uh, the, the rest of the artifacts that we have here. Fix her all up, make her look good uh, again, and uh, you know, then we can carry on and just make things better. The Society hopes to have its plans approved by City Council as soon as possible so that the background work can be completed during the winter months and the restoration process can be finished in the spring. More charges are expected against an Atacokan man who was arrested over the weekend, accused of forcibly confining a woman back in July. According to a tweet posted by the OPP commissioner, 70 firearms were seized from multiple properties owned by the accused, along with ammunition and body armor. Many of the firearms are prohibited under Canadian law. The accused, 53-year-old Brian Bates, remains in custody, awaiting a Thursday court appearance. For the second straight year, the Heimers Fall Fair will be held virtually this Labor Day weekend. Fair organizers, however, are still trying to ensure that area residents get the full Fall Fair experience with a number of contests and musical performances that can be accessed online through the Heimers Fair social media accounts. Coloring for the kids to uh, uh, different uh, classes and categories for people to enter exhibits in. Uh, again, scaled down because of the COVID. But not just that, we're doing also uh, our music online because everybody likes coming out to the fall fair, see what our music lineup is. And what we've done is uh, we've got them to uh, do recordings and then we have it on our Facebook, Instagram, where we'll have uh, the shows happening that people can tune in at any time and uh, participate with as well. The Heimer's Fair Horse Show will return this year, but spectators aren't allowed. Visitors are only allowed to enter the fairgrounds for food pickup or for the Thunder Bay District Health Unit drive-up COVID-19 vaccine clinic on Monday afternoon. Full details are available on the Heimer's Fair website. Well, nothing says, you know, the start of autumn like a nice fall fair yeah. like that. But yeah. I know yesterday, Avery, was the unofficial end of summer, but... Uh, we still had some fantastic weather out there today. Yeah, not a bad way to kick off the month of September, I would say. I always like to say my ideal day is anywhere from 22 to 25 degrees. Well, bang on, 22 in the Human X, making it feel a little bit warmer to 23, but honestly, Human X really not playing that much of a factor today, folks, because it only really kicked in for about three to five. But of course, here at TBT News, we like to give you all the information. So with that said, let's take a look Across the region where we're currently sitting at 23 in Atacokan, 24 in both Fort Francis and Dryden, a little bit of humidity in the Fort Francis area. Feeling closer to 26, mostly along the border is where any humidity is being felt, a little bit in Kenora, feeling closer to 25. Feeling closer to 25 as well up in Red Lake where they got a little bit more cloud coverage at this hour, a partly cloudy skies. Same can be set up to the far north in Big Trout Lake, but clear skies just farther south in Pickle Lake. Well, Armstrong a little bit brisk at 19, warming back up on the other side of Lake Nipigon at 21 with beautiful clear skies at this hour. And that just continues all along the North Shore to Marathon all the way down to Sault Ste. Marie. Not a cloud to be seen. Sault Ste. Marie currently at 21 degrees. Now, if you plan on going for a walk after the show tonight, I would recommend bringing a jacket with you because it's going to be a little brisk out there. 8 degrees, it's going to be dropping down tonight with mainly clear skies and heading into the rest of the week. I would recommend always having an umbrella. Details later in the news hour.
Thanks for the warning, Avery. Well, on day 18 of the campaign trail, the federal liberals joined the other national parties in releasing a platform today. We'll have